Well, hello. Uh, welcome to PAX. Welcome to uh, PAX. As they, uh, you know, as has long been, you know, the traditional greeting, you know, as we burst onto the stage, uh, joined by the spirit of Rick Ross. Um, Can you if, sing it? I mean, would we get in trouble if you sang it? But the spirit, uh, legally, we can have the spirit, but if we try to utilize any of the actual um, content, then it, it, it becomes less spiritual and, and more legal, I think is the, historically that's been the breakdown. Okay. Um, but it's vital, absolutely vital uh, to let everyone know. First of all, the greeting phase has commenced. Second of all. The drawing uh, phase has to commence. Yeah, I was just gonna say, yeah. The drawing phase obviously is well underway. Uh, you, you, have, you have reached this panel already in session. Um, but it should be said that uh, a while ago, maybe four or so years ago, we realized that through the power of the hot dog fairy, which was a unique creature born of Pax East, um, that has sort of ritually been included in the final, um, in the final work. Last panel. Yeah, basically worked in some way. And there's a, there's a few variations on this imp. Um, there is a cheesesteak fairy. There's a lobster. There's been a lobster roll fairy as well. Yeah. Philly got the cheesesteak. Uh, East became a lobster roll fairy. Yeah. Hot and then fairy. Well, at, at, at South, there was like a, a, like a whole fairy pantheon. There was like a margarita fairy. There was even a queso fairy, which, I mean, obviously I support well, fully. I mean, I had visited the Margarita Ferry a lot that day. I think yeah. <laughs> previously. Yeah. Just, to, just want to, just want to, uh, you know, shout out obviously to the the Margarita Ferry. Um, but that is all, you know, just a preamble to say that during our hour and a half panel, the Make a Strip panel, a piece of Pax tradition that goes back, you know, more than fifteen years now. Um, uh, we are going to be raising money for the official charity of PAX Child's Play, uh, which we did found a very, very long time ago. Super long time ago. Super long time ago. And it is now... Literally out of my garage. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, not euphemistically. No. Um, it actually happened where, you know, we were forced... I think that sometimes we have an idea that is a good, cool idea, and then other people agree with us. And then um, it ends up being a lot of people. And there is a logistical aspect of it that we didn't really think about. And the logistical aspect here is that there are actually hard limits. Ordinarily, individual people never discover this. But there really are hard limits on how many packages you can send to a residential place per day. Oh yeah, the mailman will let you know right away. He'll let you know right away. And he'll let you know with his eyes. Yeah. He'll let his, you know when he brings the third station wagon full uh, of packages to your house. You'll be able to know that something is wrong because you've never seen a mailman cry. Yeah, he'll say, you can come get the rest. Yes, he'll say that. Uh, and and and, you, and then you'll try to say that, but it's for charity. But that that doesn't, you know. This mailman doesn't give a shit about charity. Well, no, it's not about that. There's only so many things you can fit in the truck. Yeah. Um. Uh. And so now, of course, uh, we work that out directly with the hospitals. There's a lot of direct delivery. Um. And then whenever we have to send out larger groups of things, we package all of that. Uh, we have a there's a whole team that does it. Um. But those efforts, um, some of which have been uh, displayed here at the show, you might have already seen uh, a panel to this effect. Um, but in addition to, you know, toys and games um, and support for the child life staff at these hospitals, um, Child's Play also funds uh, incredible research and the direct application for how uh, gaming and technology, particularly uh, virtual reality, can be a life-changing, um, a life-changing thing in these contexts. Um, that is the sort of that's the context. Uh, now, here's the entreaty. Uh, <laughs> my understanding is that there is a number, uh, 
yep. on your screen somewhere. If you Hopefully. see it up at the very top, it says donate here. Uh, childsplay.donordrive.com forward slash event forward slash hot dog. Um, trust us. It's a risky click, I know. No, I was just going to say, if I saw this... <laughs> I feel confident that if I were to open that mail up on my phone, it would say, you don't really know this sender well enough to yeah. be clicking any hot dog links. Please don't. Just just do do yourself a favor. Um, Trust us on this one. Yeah, click this. If you click one hot dog link today, this is make the it one. This one you make know? it this one. You know what I mean? Uh, get something for your trouble. Um, you know, with that being firmly established, uh, welcome aboard. Thank you so much for spending uh, part of the afternoon here with us. Um, no doubt some of you have come just to see how we're preparing uh, mentally, physically, spiritually um, for our golf match against <laughs> not that Will Smith and Gary Witta coming up on Tuesday night at 7 p.m. PDT. Um, I'm not stressed at all. I, I am, you know, I am like that wavy tube man. Like that's my level of chill of, of chill like well, you sent me a text message yesterday that yeah. was just a picture of your scorecard 15 under yeah 14 under in that in that particular case 14 under but all i'm saying is that so if you're not familiar with golf that's very good you may be 14 there's only 18 under. holes yeah i was just gonna say there's only 18 holes in the whole thing i did okay um and that's just one aspect one part of the arsenal um that we'll be leveraging against those wastrels the other part is our near 30 year friendship that yeah. is unbreakable that is it's michael you know as well as i do that friendship is tested every hole some of <laughs> <laughs> especially when i hit it into the water some of these makeable putts oh listen you are incredible at putting i wish i could putt like you i wish not... i could drive off the tee here, yeah. listen. We don't we don't got time for this. All okay, right, sorry. we, we got to you got to get your shit together. Um, here we go. Um, Dave at Heroic Replicas from Milton Art from Milton Ontario asks, um, "What was your favorite parasocial relationship you've ever found yourself a part of, either side?" Hmm. You're gonna have to help me out with parasocial. Parasocial relationships uh, in this context. Basically, it means like, let's say that you uh, like, like are people a, that you meet while parachuting. No, that's not them. Um, there's a there's a whole other word for that. We'll get into it. Don't worry. I got some slides. Uh, no, the the basically imagine a scenario. Oh, ghosts like ghosts that you know. No, imagine a scenario where you uh, draw or write a web comic, and you have done so for decades and that creates uh, a kind of relationship and fellow feeling, even if you haven't met a person necessarily. Right. Mm. Um, that's the sort of relationship that they're describing there. Um, gosh, is there, has there ever been that has that specific of a word? Well, we need that word. We need some way to describe the kinds of relationships we're creating now. Yeah. Right? No, um, that's true. The sort of relationship you would develop with a person that you only see online or... Yeah, the, the, the parasocial relationships that I enjoy are the ones that become relationships. <laughs> like, uh, I used to, and I'm not saying it's necessarily the best idea, and I probably shouldn't do it uh, as often as I do. Um, but I am in the, you know, in the words of... Uh, shaggy two dope uh, down to clown um, there was a period of time where I would if a person mailed me and said hey do you want to hang out sometime I would literally do that yeah um, I mean that's scary you did I, do that a lot I am not saying that it isn't scary and I'm also not saying that I did not immediately regret it uh, occasionally yeah um, that being said um down to clown. And uh, I have friends uh, to this day that I made under those conditions. Ooh. Strangest parasocial. I don't yeah. know. I mean, there was one time, I mean, there was a period of time, period of time. Sounds like a behind the goddamn music thing, especially here. I'm like at my house, right? 
<laughs> like I'm, uh, this is. Do you have a black? Do you have, a black, do you have a black and white filter that we can apply so that we, your life can uh, can descend into chaos for our like, amusement? You have to understand. At one point in time, I was very famous. <laughs> like in the early two thousands, Penny Arcade was like a real deal. Oh yeah, no, Penny Arcade was like there was a period in the early 2000s where it was actually like the way some people think it is now. The way it is now. It's not, it's not like that anymore. And it hasn't been like that for decades. But I'm saying that in the, when, when my son was a very young boy, so this, yeah. was, this will date my, like he's 16 now. Yeah. I had to run into a grocery store to get um, bottle tops for a bottle. And I'm checking out and all I need is the bottle tops because I got to get back to the car and we're going somewhere. Yeah. And the, and the girl checking me out looks at me. She goes, okay, do you want a bag? And she looks up at me. She goes, oh my God, Penny Arcade. And she dropped down under her knees and started bowing. I well, swear no, we to God. Can't, we can't, no, that's not, you know. I, I grabbed the bottle and I ran. Well, yeah, I mean, this is the thing. It's like, here's what you have to understand. That was uh, the weirdest one. <laughs> Here's a, any any time there is a, a a movement or a motion in a worship direction, I just try to remind that person that I'm from Spokane. Yeah, exactly. And before I was from Spokane, I was from Sumner. Like, uh, there's never going to be a. You can Google those. There's never going to be a situation in which um, I'm I've earned anything like that. Um, no. and, and to the extent that it's just, we don't got to be like that. I, I, I reach down and I help that person back up. No, I run. Yeah. Well, and, and that's fine, but I mean, I get scared and I run. That's how our union functions. Yeah. Um, Target. I was just going to say, I come from a place where we refer to Target as Target, uh, just to elevate it. That was the fancy place to go. Oh yeah. They got a lot of cool stuff there. Those dish towels. Yeah. I mean, uh, a lesson that has stuck with me forever. Like, I mean, parents tell kids stuff all the time. You're I think not you wrong. A lot of it. They do that shit all the time. But like, I still remember being in Kmart and, and being nervous about like my friends seeing me in Kmart or whatever. And my mom being like, Hey, if they're, if they see you in Kmart, they're in Kmart too. Like, yeah. Oh, really? Oh yeah, I remember. There, there was a period of time where I, I really did want to be like liked. Yeah, there's a period of time you got over it. <laughs> there's a period of time. Um, there this was a period very of, long ago. You have to understand. I, I no, I remember when I was in sixth grade, and I could I could tell that there was a lot of pressure coming in, and people really wanted me to care about pants. Yeah, pants. And I could and just shirts. tell. I could just tell that like the pants thing was a big deal. <laughs> just like, and then I was like, I mean. I feel like I got a choice here. I can either become a pants aficionado uh, or I can just continue uh, to mow lawns and rent video games. Um, Tarjay from Walmart asks, if you had to live in any major grocery lifestyle brand store for one year, which would you choose? Oh man. What a bizarre question. Oh, well, I mean, for me, uh, between those two, it's like, you think, okay, well, Whole Foods, like at a certain point, if we're just choosing one off the my, top, my it's like, yeah. is like a Fred Meyer or something that has like a sporting goods section, a life section where they've got those like test beds. Exactly. exactly. No, I, no, Michael, I should mention, I should warn you that it is only 414 and somehow probably to make up for some grievous moral error. Somehow this channel, this chat uh, has generated $5,000, which was, was the amount for the hour and a half. Yeah, I know. Uh, if anything, they've inconvenienced us. I mean, yeah. I don't even know how to change that bar. I don't know how to increase it. Well, we should change it to 10,000 or the, or I'm not drawing that fairy. <laughs> yeah. For the kids, it's I'm holding <laughs> I'm holding the hostage, uh, the fairy for the kids. I don't listen. I'm here to tell you right now that hostage taking for the kids is not one of the operative phrases. It's not one of the ones that we use. 
they're going to benefit from it just the same. I guess that's true. Um, but yes, so you're right. Uh, honestly, if you, there's a lot of hacks for this question. Fred Meyer is the, is the perfect choice. It's incredibly spacious. Um, I think that you probably could live there for a year without anyone knowing. I bet people do. You know, my experience, I mean, my experience with the Fred Meyer by my house is that there are large portions of it that, that basically don't ex exist at all as retail space. Yeah. So when you go down into the basement, I don't think anybody knows what's down there. And they don't, and they don't like, they don't see a lot of light. Yeah. I mean, I definitely remember being a retail employee and there no, was it, there at, Toys R Us, that... at Toys R Us, we're there sort of like designated wastelands. Well, there were aisles you don't want to get caught in, right? And so if it's your job, you know, to restock shelves or sweep or whatever your job is out on the floor, yeah, you just find ways to avoid certain aisles. Like I didn't want to get caught in the Barbie aisle because I didn't know anything about it. Yeah. I didn't want to get caught in the action figure aisle because it was always collectors asking, hey, I don't see like this specific Yoda. I'm like, yeah, I don't have it. Well, I know you got them in the back. You get one in every box. Open a new box. Like, I don't want to have that conversation. Open a new box? Oh, yeah. I don't want, get like, anything some for Yoda. this. I don't, what do I get? Nothing. Yeah, right. Exactly. No. Um, they would take all the action figures off the shelves and hide them in different places around the store. Yeah. So that I thought my shelves were bare. This is not... So bring I don't out a new box. Michael, why would you lie to why would you lie to the channel like this? This is a real thing. This is a real thing that people do. They That's, would I, take them off so that you would have to go back and then open a box and then restock it with the Yoda? Yes. Just to bring out that one Yoda. It was like, oh well, this is the Yoda that's got like the fucking snake in his butt or whatever. I don't know. I don't remember. <laughs> I, don't, I, I, I honestly I bet that one's worth a lot. I mean I'm, you know, I might engage in skill duggery to secure such a figure. Yeah. Um, listen, uh, so I think that you called it. I think that Fred Meyer is the obvious choice. That being said, if I lived in Trader Joe's, yes. I feel like we could we could exchange in a we could exchange valuable items. Jerry, have you had their cookie butter ice cream? Co they invented a, a material called a super fluid if you will <laughs> fluid, if you will uh i assume generated by thinking machine supercomputers oh dude is this like the biscoff shit it's called cookie butter it's better than that how could it be better than the than the cookie spread from biscoff get yourself over to trader joe this sounds like a commercial now we're not being sponsored in any way by trader joe's although god i would i would you could pay me in cookie butter <laughs> Huge savings for you, uh, Joseph. Just jars of it. Show up at my house. I would talk about Trader Joe's and their great deals. Waiting to be filled. Now, Left Hand Luke from London asks, are there any physical activities you can adequately perform with your non-dominant hand? No. The fact of the matter is, and Mike will tell you as much, Left Hand Luke, I can't really accomplish things with my dominant hand. <laughs> not wrong yeah he's got I don't, no coordination I, don't, I want you to tell me more about this dominant hand so you're saying that one of your two hands is capable and effective is, is skilled in some way i don't have that hand i don't that's not one of the hands i have i mean my left hand is used to doing uh <clears throat> shortcut keys for photoshop so I would have a tablet here. I'd be drawing. Oh. I'd have a monitor. I'd oh, be, for sure. I'd be... Okay, so so your left hand, because and you actually, and sometimes it's built into the device you're using. To, sometimes it's a separate device. Yeah. But you had to develop that that affinity, right? But these days you use an iPad Pro. Yeah, I can lift it up just like a, an inch. You can. See. I'm just drawing on an iPad. So this this hand is doing all of my undos, my rotates. What are the what are the interactions that you that you do with the left hand? Uh, so tap with two fingers is undo. Actually, I can go, I can go back a ways. Oh, tap okay. with three fingers brings back. Okay. Uh, tap and hold with two fingers. I can rotate just like paper. No shit. And I can zoom. So is it easier to rotate the paper like that or just rotate the whole device on your lap? 
Uh, it's much easier to rotate the paper if I if I can. Huh. Well, once the device is in a comfortable spot, like I've got it on a little pillow here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I mean, so your non-dominant hand is, is awesome. twice as is twice as dominant as my dominant hand. Yeah, I think is what we learned today. Um, and of course, don't forget uh, the donate link up at the very top. Um, there was some skullduggery on Michael's part. No, on, for real, 10,000. Or nothing. Or nothing. <laughs> but it, I, I, won't, I won't move the goalposts again. I, uh, I okay, uh, let's, let's, just, let's just hurdle forward um, with great speed. Benjamin uh, from Pennsylvania asks, ha oh boy, I can tell just from the length. Yeah. Um, I've recently become friends with a small mouse who sits in the brim of my hat and gives me pointers on how to speak in public, uh, what to include in this new small newspaper I run, even helps me tinker in my workshop. Oh boy. How can I ever repay him for all the good he's done? You know, give him a tiny toy car. Let's just, now you're crossing the streams. Those are completely different brands. Oh. Okay. Which mouse was that? Uh, that's that's the um, Ben and me. Like it's the like Benjamin Franklin mouse. It's a cartoon, I think. Are you sure that's not yeah. Beverly Cleary's Ralph S. Mouse? Well, the Ralph S. Mouse, obviously, that's the third book in that series. That's the Mouse and the Motorcycle, number yeah. one. Then Runaway Ralph. I mean, it's right. sort of the middle child of that series. Ralph S. Mouse. That's when he gets the car. That's when he says vroom, obviously to go forward, but morv. Uh, I, uh, I read those books a lot. Yesterday? Don't fucking test me on my uh, Ralph S. Mouse or indeed anything in the Cleary verse. <laughs> why is it there a, cl a Cleary cinematic universe? I, there I is in made, my like, mind. Ask me, ask me about my dreams. They've made Ralph S. Mouse movies over the years, but they never really seem to hide all together into one they, uncohesive universe they can't capture it oh boy i I'm, I'm i'm starting to wonder if if laura if the rigors of pax online haven't sapped laura's psychic strength delg uh from what was i assumed until recently still pittsburgh asks Tycho, if i am to assume as i have been taught that the extent of what we know is solely what can be described by physics, then what should I say to the apparently extra existential being who dominates the skies and raises novel life, perhaps unlife or paralife, since life may be too reductive? God, this might be Chris Straub too. Mm -hmm. uh, forms from the collapsed atoms in its footsteps that have been hanging around my neighborhood, trying to get me into its Mayan, I assume, pyramid scheme. Should I tell this thing it can't exist? Or is this just an unusually convincing cult pitch? If the latter, thoughts on joining. Look, I want you to start a cult and I want to join it, Doug. I mean, that's Welcome to our first, I think, entry into the PAX Q&A fan fiction. Well, I mean, listen, speaking of, speaking of uh, you know, an extended universe, a cinematic universe. Yeah, really. The... Uh, these stories were so plentiful at PAX East, what we have uh, begun calling the last convention. Um, they were so plentiful that we had to have an awards ceremony at the end of the Q and A, uh, just to honor all those who had put so much time and effort in. Maybe too much time. Well, I don't. We don't like to discourage. No, um, that's true. I'll indeed, never discourage art. No, no, Even no. If my Q and A is the vehicle that they choose to express themselves, uh, listen, the medium. That's, that is, that has to be considered the Q&A's best expression. You're that not is wrong. As a venue for a, the next generation of artists. Um, we're like, it'd be like those bugs that like lay eggs and then when they hatch, they just devour the host. That's the optimal scenario, I think for us. Um, okay. 68, okay, all right. Okay. Uh, we didn't talk about this uh, egg thing. We, we didn't cover uh, that ahead of time. I No eggs for me. Are we um, voting on being devoured? Is that no, no, uh, 6,800 uh, earth dollars? What so far? I know, I know you did not, you did not scare them away. 
Uh, well, and then I chastise 10, 000, them. I will certainly draw the hot dog fairy. <laughs> I don't. I don't trust it anymore. Um, old Frankenstein, uh, from Twanstilwania. Twanstilwania asks, if I've lost feeling in my hand, all I have to do is stretch or shake it around a little to get the sensation to abate. If I've lost feeling in my soul, what should I shake around or stretch? Michael. I don't know who these people are, man. <laughs> they're, they're I don't Laura. know what they expected from me. <laughs> they're Laura from work. Like you can see 100% of what I'm capable of right now. <laughs> You're looking at it. This is, this is me at the maximum level. It really, this is me at the apex of my ability. I can sit in a chair. I can sit in this fucking chair and I can, I can draw these little pictures. You can sketch and doodle. You can sketch and doodle. Dude, can you draw a pirate? Yeah, of course I could draw a pirate. Can you, show me. Can you draw a pirate from the side? Is that something you know how to do? Right? Or can you draw maybe a turtle with a, a little hat? Because if I like what I see here, I think you may have what it takes to become a professional artist. Are you serious? Yeah. God, yeah. That's really good. Thank you. <laughs> I think, I, I think, think you at a certain age, you remember that commercial. Yes. Now, uh, and you got sick and stayed home from school. Oh, but did, did you ever do that test? No, I never. You had to send away for it. But you could have drawn that pirate or that turtle. Yeah, Jerry, the reality is by the time I saw that commercial, I knew I could draw. And I, oh. that, that to me looked like a fleece. Oh, I see. You can't be tricked that way. Yeah. See, I mean, I once got something in the mail that said they had, that um, I might have what it takes to be a, a poet. <gasps> so did you know that they do that to writers too? No. Yeah. It took, wow. me, a while, it took me a while to figure out that it was actually a ruse. Um, that sucks. It was a near thing. Um, do they like ask you to rhyme some words and they're like, oh, oh no, yeah. Hmm. No, they, they, they don't even, they don't even do that. Basically they say, we can put you in this compilation of new poets. Oh, we can get your work out. They're not even going to teach you. Why? You're great. Yeah. You're already great. See, they know, listen, God, they we, know the writers. <laughs> we can say, um, you know, we can say maybe that uh, they're engaging in some skullduggery. What we can't say is that they don't know their prey. Yeah. Uh, Mandrake from Sevenfold asks, uh, the archers are at the gates, my lord. They keep saying, ouch, phrasing. <laughs> I hate this. How do I get them to stop? Oh, boy. All right. Oh, the show Archer. It's a good show. Oh, yeah. It's still a good show. Um, Sinjin, St. Aloysius, from Miss Pierre's School for Boys of a Particular Archetype, asks, <laughs> oh, Laura. Uh, Sirs, <laughs> I tire of dwelling on your Oreos and Tamid Tims. Let us take a moment and meditate on the, uh, on the elegant lady finger, the snack of fancy little boys like myself everywhere. What the hell? It can be paired with creams, liqueurs, even sugared fruits. Why this... must you debase yourself with these peasants' biscuits? Now, this sounds dangerously like anti-Oreo propaganda. Well, yeah, it's, I think that, I think that they definitely have a position vis-a-vis -vis, um, the Oreo. And the reason that they, but the Oreo is not above reproach. Uh, the Oreo does, uh, does possess a sweetened cream. Careful. Um, but the, the cookie, the cookie wafer has a, a, a dark, almost dirt-like, uh, character. That's why you're supposed to dunk it. Is that what it is? Yeah, a, a Oreo is fine even by itself. It's a good cookie. I think it's still top 10 cookie. But when dunked in milk... Oh, you're saying that the milkification process... Yes. It makes elevates... It the perfect 
cookie. I see. I see. It, it, it We're not it. getting paid by Nabisco. At but all. but again, <laughs> ready. Butter, packages of Oreos. Let us know. And obviously, uh, Sinjin, thank you so much for writing in. <clears throat> uh, Jolene Jolene uh, from Jolene Jolene asks, everyone has a favorite country song or singer, uh, no matter what they say on their MySpace. Uh, who and what are your favorite singers slash songs? And if you don't think you have one, why is it Dolly Parton? And here you come again. God, Do the Dolly Parton ovra is is ridiculous listen i mean we we both grew up in spokane it's ridiculous so yeah. i have no pro i don't have any i absolutely like country music oh yeah there's there's no universe in which i, I can't come out and and um and try to make the case that there isn't some ball and yeah uh, country ass music um out there uh, the truth is i could probably i could probably lead off with a few uh, Garth Brooks. Yeah, Jolene balls out of control. Garth Brooks, it's like, where do you go? Do you do Friends in Low Places or do you do the Thunder Rolls? I think, my me personally, Friends in Low Places. Friends in Low Places, I mean, Friends in Low Places is like um, uh, some of the, like the, the John Bon Jovi thing where it's like, as soon as you get into it, I mean, we were, it's, we it's took, a psychic force. The one that we took a vacation once to a ranch, just like a horse ranch where you go. And uh, they played that. That came on like during the barbecue the first night. And as soon as I heard it, it was just like perfect because I was out at this ranch. There were horses there. Well, and, and I was surprised to learn that these cacti have some kind of a fruit on them. Yes. Uh, the yeah, prickly the, pear. The prickly pear fruit. The yeah. margarita they make out of that. Yeah, it's exactly. Good. Do the do the cacti make it themselves? I have no idea. I I just drank a lot of margaritas in a cotton grove, uh, <laughs> and I saw I saw Noah climbing on a tree, and this lady's like, "You better get him down from there. That thing's full of scorpions." Scorpions? Like, <laughs> yeah, it was our first time in the desert. But by this time, you're three sheets to the wind. Yeah, the desert is no joke. Like even if you go someplace that's like. Like it's a nice okay. place. Like it seems okay. Like they're like, oh, you're gonna go for a hike? Yeah. Oh, watch out for all the fucking snakes. <laughs> what? Don't fall yeah. into a crevasse and die. Yeah, you can find a snake or two. We got a snake or two in the middle of uh, Washington State. Believe it. Uh, <clears throat> Rabbit from Rabbit. Ooh, asks. So Jerry's must play. Nobody else gets it. Game is Kentucky Route Zero, so I assume. Rabbit, you um, you found me out. Uh, that is definitely 100% the game I, I force on people. And it's also the game whose esoteric uh, nonsense t-shirt that I own uh, is just one more vector for me to abuse other people with that game. Um, so I assume, yes, yeah, so you're, you're correct, Rabbit. What is Mike's equivalent? So what is what is the game, what is the Mike game that you feast on? That nobody else gets? Right. I mean, typically the the way back one that we usually pull out for these is Wetrix. Yeah, I was so I, good at Wetrix. I don't know another person who has ever had like something nice to say about Wetrix in particular. It's a terrible puzzle game. I mean, it's, it, the idea is it's based on fluid dynamics. And you would have to sculpt these um, three mountains. Terrains. Yeah. Was that on the N64? Yeah, in the Dreamcast, I think. Yeah. And you had to try to contain water, water. pockets of water. <laughs> it was so bizarre. I mean, it was completely analog. Yeah. You know, sculpting, you know, and shaping these dishes and bowls to try to c collect water. Yeah. I mean, my that's my guess is... Uh, rabbit because i've certainly never heard one more person talk about it the way mike does let alone with reverence for some reason i got it it yeah. just made, it made sense oh, man, I can no, I, it no i had played like um weltris do you ever play weltris what was weltris weltris is sort of like imagine um tetris but instead of 2d 3d and you're dropping the pieces down from the top trying to fill layers oh i see yeah yeah, it was it was pretty good, but 
it turns out that adding that other dimension makes it pretty fucking hard. Can't bet. Shodan from upstairs asks, would a silicon life form deserve to be granted the same rights as an organic sentience? God, I, I'm not I, the guy to ask this. I love this. I just love this. I want to read a book about somebody who's gotten a Yeah, I, want, I, I, I promise you that that book exists several times over. Yeah, that's um, why I read Asimov. Yeah, uh, I mean, I would say, I would say yes, but I mean, let me let me talk to this uh, entity for a while because the, the entity will be able to make the case. Yeah, they need to make the case. Um, yeah, it well, it'll be perfectly clear. Like you, you won't be able to. Yeah, like it will be ineluctable once you hear it. Um, Carl, you won't uh, be able to luck it. You, you just try. Try and luck this. You fucking piece of shit. You try to get in here and luck this. It ain't gonna happen. It's ineluctable. It's ineluctable. Carl from the pits of hell asks, uh, if you're making a quesadilla and you fold the tortilla, all right, I'm, Carl, I'm modeling this in my mind, and you fold the tortilla over all the good stuff inside, instead of getting a second tortilla, have you made a quesadilla or a half a quesadilla? In, in my house, you've made a half a quesadilla. Yeah, that's the that's the delineation. Yeah, do you want a whole quesadilla is two tortillas. Yeah, my thinking is that you've made like three-fourths of a quesadilla. I, I, I guess, what are you talking about? Well, it's the same amount, of, it's the same amount of, of good stuff inside, right? No, it's not. Oh, really? No, because you have to make sure that it's going to fold oh. over enough to keep that little pocket. Oh. Whereas if you're going two tortillas, you go right out to the edges put the other tortilla on who cares who gives an s who gives an s word well what if what if you oh you know it's funny michael i just see that uh, not that will smith has loaded up pga tour 2k21 no doubt in an attempt to assuage those He's practicing those fears that have already begun to gnaw at him um indistinguishable from a gastrointestinal disease is this fear <sighs> Um, I think that what you have made is a quesadilla. It's a quesadilla. And then I think that it's possible to make two, say, two quesadillas simultaneously by laying the extra one up on top, slicing in half, and then doing it that way. And I, I won't brook any, uh, any information to the contrary. I won't brook it. Don't brook it. Here's a black envelope. Okay. But I think we might not be able to trust it. Pastor Fred Meyer... Mm hmm. I don't already. Okay. I don't. I don't buy it. Um, from an adequately stocked grocery store. See, now I know we're not talking about okay. Fred Meyer. Um, every time I go to the Coin Star, it's not working. So I go to the Coin Star, which is not working. And this is every time I go to the Coin Star, and then I go to the Coin Star, and it's not working. Every time it's like this. Every time I go to the Coin Star, it's not working. Anyway, I go to the Coin Star, and it's not working and this is every time i go to the coin star that really got me i don't know why but that really got me uh, it's it's I mean, a delight it's just a it's a it's a delight that you can we can have this joy again and again you know that material there's no shortage just laser focused on me it's rich it's rich the um, dumber the better, please. Yeah. Uh, Cabernet uh, from Sauvignon uh, asks, if you were a wine, what kind of wine would you be? Oh, hmm. man. Probably like a dessert wine. Like, yeah, almost like a Moscato. certainly. Isn't... Yeah, I, I would be brandy. Let's... Let's the distill. Singer? No, let's distill that shit. Is that um, what brandy is? Yep. Yeah. Really? Brandy is super wine. That's Rick why candy. it's so sweet. It's part of it. Um, Ixtli hmm. from the lost continent of Mu asks uh, Moish, Krakatoa, and Gerbil Hula Kids. Hey, that's us. It's us, I think. Let's let's move forward with the presumption that it is. I plan to take over the world and rule it with an iron fist. Right, right. What should my campaign song be? Well, you gotta 
you got to find some way to, to get the information out there. Um, but in a, in a format that people are going to be okay with, it's got to be smooth. Yeah. It's got to have, that's got to have an angle. Um, let's say uh, blank space by Taylor Swift. <clears throat> oh, you're not going to believe this. That villain will during our Q and a panel. Yeah. Is texting me about how, uh, about how to set up his game. Can you tell him that we're on the PAX main I stage? I am doing a panel right now, Will. And then just to boost it, I'm going to say, God! That'll let him know. Uh, Josh from CT asks, what is the most vile alcoholic beverage you recall consuming? Uh, I mean, your your history with beverages of this kind is relatively recent. Yeah, I mean, you started making your own alcohol in the office, and I drank some weird stuff that didn't taste right a couple times, for sure. Yeah, for sure. The most vile alcoholic beverage I recall consuming, Josh from CT, is when I used to be a dishwasher slash bus boy hmm. at, um, do you know this story? Chapter 11? Yeah. yeah. At chapter 11, experience the hometown difference. Um, I felt very clever because sometimes they would let me do the sign. And I came up with a slogan, turn to chapter 11 for the holidays. It's like <laughs> Did a, you really? It's like a book thing. Like a yeah. turn to check, like, like it was a book. And they put that up on the reader board. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I mean, I put it out there. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I mean, honestly, I, I think I'm not sure I asked them, um, but uh, they let they just told up. you to go put up the reader. Yeah, boards. Okay. I, I didn't have all the letters exactly. I had to like turn a letter upside down, and it yeah. didn't look like 100, percent but it was fine. Um, the most vile alcoholic beverage you recall consuming. So when I worked there, I was 18 and 19, which you might recall is uh, not drinking age. So I've heard. Uh, at, at least where we live. Um, but that's only if you don't work in a restaurant and fastidiously collect every half-consumed drink that comes back to the dish pit Ugh. and put it all together in a single carafe. Oh, God. Oh, that's so vile. I mean, how do you survive that? I mean, that's why you can eat anything now. I mean, yeah, I, th I think that that's like, it's like the, the trial of the grasses. Yeah. <laughs> it's, if you wake up from that, it's you like never some, have to worry again. It's some witcher type shit for sure. Uh, well, Michael, you'll be pleased to know that we're sitting at $7,814. Well, I still have to finish inking this panel. Then we'll start coloring. It's going to be close. I will make sure that the hot dog fairy gets in. I believe if in you. We get to 10K. You have what it takes. Uh, Sherlock Holmes uh, from 221B Baker Street asks A murderer is sentenced to death. He must you think choose. That's the real Sherlock Holmes? I think, isn't that the right address? What? Yeah. I mean, that's honestly, that's the, that's the giveaway. Hmm. Um, so, I mean, Sherlock Holmes is basically like on, the, on this panel. Yeah, pretty much. Right. So put that on the schedule, uh, if you can. Um, a murderer is sentenced to death. Uh, he must choose between three rooms. The first is full of raging fires. The second is full of assassins with loaded guns. And the third is full of lions that haven't eaten in three years. Being an astute observer, he picks one door and lives which is it? Laura is in this Zoom. Wait a second. What was the first door to? Raging fires. Assassins and get Laura here. Get, come out. No, man. Emerge. You got so. 
I can unmute, but I'm not. I'm not going on camera. <laughs> oh, no, no. I, I listen. The the frame isn't even set up for that anyway. It's okay. Yeah. Um. I would, I would never ask a civilian to do. <laughs> well, <laughs> do we, this. To, I would never ask them to do it. Thank but you. But this would I be correct in assuming that this is uh, a Laura from work joint? This is a completely user generated question. I'm not even kidding you. Well, now that I have you, yes. please. Please increase our IQ tenfold with the addition of yours. And which of these is going to work? Which one is we, this? <laughs> we got we got the first door. Is oh, full of rage I know. Fires. Ooh. We got the assassins with loaded guns, and we got the lions that haven't eaten. Oh, you know what? Maybe... You want the you want the dead lions. You want the, the dead, dead lions. lions. Yes, They're I was so just going to say they haven't eaten in three years because they can't. And, yeah. and now it's just a weird place where a guy keeps his dead lions. Precisely. Yep. You're going to use those lion corpses. You're going to throw all the crappy stuff at all oh. the other baddies. Like, you're well, good. You've got material in there. That richness only accrues What over a great time. little brain teaser. What a delight. What well, a delight. Uh, Laura, thank you so much for emerging Thanks, from the shadows. Bye. All right. Um, honestly, yeah. I, I want more questions that are like puzzle rooms, please. Uh Ethan uh, from Cher de Port uh, asks, what do you think VR would need in order to become more than a niche offering? What a great question. Well, I mean, they, I think you would need some, some surefire way to combat motion sickness for a, se a certain segment of the population. Uh, speaking for myself here, I would need some kind of patch. And I've tried drama mean and stuff, and it's just not always it, enough. It works a little bit. Right. And there's, and the thing is, is that there's actually applications that you would like to see, like you don't, you like the experience of being in VR, but you cannot long endure it because of your human frailty. Yeah. Right. Um, is it, or is it not true that when you tried uh, iRacing in VR, that you actually clocked better times? I did. Yeah. In your simulator. I was faster, significantly faster in VR, I the assume. The same skill, yeah, but I'm saying exactly the same level of skill, yeah. same environment, same equipment. The only difference, I think, is that you were granted that additional, like, just proprioception or something inside there. Like, just better sense, like, better yeah. space. I, better I, sense think it, space. I think it has to do with the sense of space, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, the main thing, well, first of all, it's incredibly expensive. Um, yeah. It's incredibly expensive and it makes people throw up. And so, I mean, those are, those are pretty substantial hurdles. Um, the truth is, I mean, I wonder if to a certain extent, I wonder if it, some of it isn't generational. I wonder if when you were younger, if you would have been less prone to it. I, I don't experience sickness in VR. Yeah. Um, and neither do either of my kids, but I don't my know. My kids if just, don't. Yeah, but it's like kids can uh, like kids do things on. Have you ever like tried to get on a swing set and swing as a as an adult? Yes, it's very weird. It's bad, and you get a weird headache. Yeah, and then you and you don't feel super good. Yeah, right. Um, so I don't know if it's just because they're kids or if it's because there's like a there's actually like a some people are just better at it than others. Um, some people are just smarter, handsome, um, cool. Uh, sensual. I don't, that, well, I don't think that has anything um, to do with it. I think it's a big part of it. Um, it's funny to see Noah just got, um, or I got him, House Flipper on, on Oculus. Oh, I was just going to say, they have that on Quest now, right? Yeah, so he was in the he's in the um, entryway, and I just look over, and he's down on his hands. No, this <laughs> like is the, this. this is it. I saw the trailer. I was like, I was like oh, Roya loves House Flipper. I should get her that on, uh, I should get her that on oculus quest yeah he, he loves uh, it it's apparently great and then i saw the video and the person is down on their hands and knees scrubbing with the brush and it's like it's like i will buy this for you as long as you hold a brush while you're doing it right while Can you're doing you in it your room i i was just like i don't i feel like i feel like somewhere a machine intellect is just laughing at us cackling and it's the sound is so harsh well and then it's like it's sometimes i'll walk through my dining room where i have like a photograph of my grandpa 
who served in World War II. And, and, and you'll wonder what he sees. And then I look over at my son in VR, like painting a fence. And I wonder, like, what does he think is going on? It's like, I just, I just want to have a fence painted at the end of it. And, you know, I'm just happy he's having fun. He loves it. It's a great game. Oh, no, I, I don't care that much. By the same token. By the same token, if I could get that energy applied to his real room. God, we'd be looking like a million fucking dollars. Right? Around here. Um, uh, Water Slide Ed from the public pool asks, these goddamn kids. <laughs> With the T. With the T, okay. Uh, keep pissing in the pool and it's making me crazy. The water is changing all kinds of colors. It looks like a Kool-Aid commercial in here. Oh my gosh. Anyway, what's your favorite frozen ice treat to enjoy on a hot summer's day? Cookie butter from Trader <laughs> Joe's. Ice cold cookie butter. Um, cookie butter lozenges. Uh, I, I have to say that I am quite partial to an ice cream sandwich. I find that ice cream sandwiches never cost as much as they should, given how good they are. They're always a great buy. And then obviously at the ice cream truck, when it rolls through. Yeah. Um, I mean, historically I've enjoyed the, uh, the bomb pop, that rocket pop with the three colors. Although, uh, I don't know if it's if it's just a, a trick of memory or if it is uh, because they have gotten smaller. But I remember a bomb pop being roughly the size of a grain silo. Yeah. Uh, they're smaller now. I like uh, mint chocolate chip ice cream. Especially on a hot day, I find it the mint refreshing. Are you making a face at me? Oh. Mint chocolate chip. What? It's good. The last refuge. Or mint brownie. Scoundrel. Sometimes they'll do like a mint brownie ice cream. That's yummy. Here, Mr. Milk from the world premiere of Mr. Milk asks, somebody nope. once told me the world was going to reward me oh. for just trying hard and persevering. I'm beginning to think this isn't true. Yeah. How do I reconcile this crushing realization? Oh, man. Well, I mean, I only know, I only know what we did, which was to uh, have something to do. Whenever I wasn't doing whatever was necessary, uh, have something to do that where you can put all of these feelings. Yeah. Um, would it surprise you, Mr. Milk, to learn that I'm recommending art? Dre Wanner from Fizky Business asks, the last thing you put on your mouth is now blessed with heavenly wisdom and has grown angelic wings. It will follow you around and grant small miracles in your day-to-day -day life. What is your new conduit of modestly godlike power God, what uh, did I a have? plastic kitchen cup that I found on my computer desk and used to get some water out of the bathroom tap and then realized that I didn't really know where that cup had been. Uh, my lips, I think, very recently brushed against uh, the Pixel 3 uh, from the Goog. Nice. Uh, and so honestly, that doesn't that seem like a deeply modern kind of fairy? It does, yeah. Oh, Sherlock Holmes is back. Oh man, what a delight. Thank God for you, Sherlock Holmes. Sherlock Holmes, now Laura, I might be calling you back in. So, you know, get on the button. Get on the blower. Um, Sherlock Holmes from 221B Baker Street asks, two men go to visit a female friend. She offers him drinks. Uh, she offers them drinks, which they accept. Their drinks are identical in every way. One of the men drinks fast and survives. The other takes his time but dies. 
why did one of the men die? Oh man. What? Hmm. Laura, if you're there. Yes. Oh, I see. I see the mute has gone. Now, Can Laura. You read it. Oh, read it Laura, one more time. Don't worry. Me. This this is going to be for everybody. Obviously, this is for the chat as well. Yes. Uh, we, are, we are all nourished by Mr. Holmes. Two men go to visit a female friend. God, is that important or is that a red herring? She offers them drinks, which they accept. The drinks are identical in every way. I think who she is exactly Ice. is important. Ice. So I think that might be a red herring. Ice. Yeah, oh, oh, oh. I think what you're hearing oh, is here, correct. Here, oh, hold on. Here, just come here. No, no. Oh, never mind. Brenna is saying that she is Bre not Brenna right. Is, Brenna is correct. I'm she hearing. Is not, yeah, she is saying that, that she does not want to be visible in these times. Um, if, what's the answer? So if you drink the drink quickly, the ice that's in there wouldn't affect it, right? But if the, if the guy takes his time, uh, that ice oh. melts. If there's bad Thank stuff you. in the ice, you're and dead. It releases a poison. There we go. Oh, man. <laughs> Brenda just burst into the room saying, it's the ice. It's the ice. And I had no idea what the fuck was going on. Do I need to fix the fridge? I was like, I don't, I can't, I'm doing a panel right now. It's the correct amount of enthusiasm for this. I, it's the correct amount. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, thank <laughs> you so much, Laura. Sure. Gosh, Sherlock, are you still here? Are you in one of these? Uh, Schickler, hey, the sextology uh, is being made manifest, Michael. Schickler's back from Horsetown. Okay. Uh, asks, Penny Arcade breakfast cereal. What's it look like? What's it taste like? What's it called? I mean, I, I'm willing to accept your name, Schickler. I mean, that's fine. But... In terms of like, what does it look like? Um, yeah, what do we got? We have like, I you know, the, the situation that I think would be the best is like if you need like a special bowl to eat it. Yeah. You know what? Let's say that inside it's like nerds. You know, a box of nerds has got like that divider. Two sides. Yeah. So what if there's like three cereals and then there's like the bowl that you eat it in is like three panels. It's like a wide uh that's triple bowl unnecessarily complicated i want to bring for a cereal i want to bring the ritual back i was thinking it could bowl. have just little um gabe symbols and then i was like well could it i don't know how you would do stripes so i was like well we probably just wouldn't have a type of in there at all <laughs> <laughs> but it just seems like a lot of work to figure out how to do like stripes and okay well i feel honored uh, Arthur from T Intro Webs asks, uh, "What hobby, skill, etc., did you uh, acquire during these hellish times that you probably never would have had things gone differently? Uh, would Mike still be as into racing games? Absolutely Gosh, not. Who knows? Uh, what fun things has Jerry discovered him about himself while stuck at home for weeks, months on end? Um, the truth is, you had sort of like." the bug the racing bug actually bit you yeah it technically before. Did, i just i don't know like if i was still able to go out and do stuff if i would have if oh, i would have maintained the interest the in having a, a rig here in the house and all that yeah that makes sense um i gosh i mean a lot of the a lot of the skills that i was putting together uh required a lot of you know particular pieces of equipment that live still at the office and i haven't needed them and the truth is i've actually had plenty of work to do yeah um in the meantime somebody else might know better than me if i've developed a skill uh i don't know i, I play a lot of ukulele i guess it's a good one uh it's pretty good it's portable it's a nice thing to have um I'm trying to think. No, I I, I no. haven't. I have not been improved in any way, shape, or form. <laughs> in fact, if anything, I've been it's diminished. Gotten, it's gotten worse. Um, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I've been diminished. Uh, we are creeping up, uh, Mr. Krahulik. Uh, Mr. Racecar, I should say. I don't have the gloves on. I guess they're, that's true. They're right down here. Um, but you can transform at a moment's notice. Yeah. Um, we are right at the precipice 
of nine G's, uh, which means that you may soon be forced. That's good. Um, to iterate your promise. Uh, Chag Nubular from my personal Sphinx asks, as a person who took a while to grow into my own face, I end up hearing the term late, late bloomer or ugly duckling a lot. I prefer to think of it as going from a magic carp to a Gyarados. Hmm. Um, a sudden and intense change from one state to another. Sublimation, uh, another term you might enjoy that describes something like that. Uh, plus some people like Pikachu look about the same all their lives. I, I yeah. Jerry's like that. My gosh. Get it. I posted a, a photo of us from like 1999, uh, a month or so ago, and you look identical. Yeah. And I look like a baby. Oh, yeah, that's definitely true. Um, having some kind of a hair on your face has definitely um, altered that vibe. Like sometimes we, like when you call me and your picture comes up on my phone, like I don't even recognize it as you. You got to get a new picture of me, man. I don't even know who that is. Um, uh, let's see. Whereas others, uh, like Dratini Dragonite, go through serious changes at certain points in your life. Uh, what was your evolution cycle in Pokemon terms? Just Dialga. From the jump. From the jump? From the jump. Smooth. Front oh, to back. I don't really know. What was mine? I don't feel like I've, I've gotten hairier. Yeah. Uh, I don't maybe, know if there's maybe, something in that, maybe something in that fighting chain. Yeah. I definitely uh, have feel more comfortable now and um, all the, you know, traveling and everything we've done. Like, I feel good about this evolution. Yeah, you, you had to, but you had to, you had to develop into it. Yeah. Like we were, we were made to become okay with it. Yeah. It wasn't the natural state. Uh, Madge Davenport from Chesterfield asks, my couch has turned into my desk. I live on my couch now and nobody can blame me for it. I have run out of comfortable ways to sit. Uh, what remedies can you offer to my flattened posterior and hunched frame? Do I just need a nicer couch? Yeah. Probably I mean, it, yeah. I was just going to say, treat yourself. I mean, it sounds like it. I mean, we, we, can't, we can't say that it's not money well spent. If that's, if that's where you're spending all of your time. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Get that for yourself. And don't go to, you know, don't like, get an Ikea couch. Um. We have an Ikea couch and it looks nice, but every time you sit on it, it's like your ass is being crucified. Yeah, they do not hold up. M. Bison from the Street Fighter movie asks, uh, wow. now, that, now that PAX transcends the physical, what do you say about joining forces and creating PAX Bisonica? Um, I mean, I feel like five is plenty. Um, yeah. I feel like number-wise, we're good. But if we decide to, you know... Uh, recalibrate uh our efforts uh mr bison i assume the m stands for mr um <laughs> why wouldn't it <laughs> then uh you know obviously we'll be in touch <clears throat> dova again from better seattle uh in business school asks um has as your business has grown over these many years what terrifying business terminology or verbiage have you had to learn that makes you break out in hives. God, you know the one I hate, and I've I've had to, I've been called this to my face, is a creative. Oh, remember that guy is like I hate the I hate creatives. <laughs> okay, and it's yeah, I think that that's a pretty common. This creative is there. I mean. I understand why they have the term monetize. Yes. But I, I really do think, I really do think that you have to be thinking about the work that you're making first and who that work is for. And so a lot of times that's the issue that I have with these terms is that these terms are just sort of like self-replicating. None of them center creativity or art. Well, yeah, they, they, problematize it if yeah. we want to if we want to find another word they those are just those are actually uh barriers to monetization 
uh, these pesky creatives that uh, manufacture all the work people value. We just need their deliverables. Uh huh. <laughs> Ugh. Blah. Blah. Just me from North a bit asks, do you ever read through any of the questions you don't get on stage or are they lost to time living only in the finite memory of Laura from work? It would be very meta if Laura put this one in, but I don't think that she did. No, I don't think so. Um, no, we don't read through any of them because uh, sometimes such questions uh, are evergreen uh, and can be applied to any future past, uh, any, any future packs, thereby diminishing the amount of work that Laura from work must do. It's true. Uh, oh my goodness, 9,458, my friend. Oh, we're so close. Oh and I'm gosh. almost ready to draw this hot dog fairy. And like I said, we know exactly what to do with it. I know right where he's going to go. Dr. Wiley from a hidden robot factory asks, boys, I need some fresh robot master ideas. Uh -oh. The best I can do on my own is like fireman and heat man and flame man and napalm man and magma man and so on. Man, boys, I will tell you. You boys uh, seem creative. <laughs> I will say that in junior high, coming up with my own Mega oh. Man guys. I mean, that was that was my that was every day. Everybody was fucking. Doing That's what it. I was doing. Everybody was fucking doing it, man. And you know, uh, it's a similar thing now. There was a period of time where it was all Pokemon and Pokemon evolutions yeah, around man. here, types, abilities. Um, yeah, I mean, think about that Minecraft. Like, think about how much creative work Minecraft has inspired. Oh yeah, as a as a game, and it's also really changed. Like, it's changed what kids will tolerate from games. Oh, if you can't build something in a game, no, they have really serious expectations about that. Um, let's see, it's got to be simple, but. It also has to be kind of silly. Um, I feel like the correct, I feel like a, um, I feel like there, there has to be an opportunity for something with ramen. Uh, the Desert Leviathan from a serpentine spiral of bones rising from the dunes asks, let's say that you were hypothetically trapped in your favorite video games. However, you were trapped by an asshole genie. Now, I assume, Desert Leviathan, I assume that you mean that this genie is an asshole. <laughs> but there, there are ambiguities here. That what do you I, rub to get this genie? I want you to consider on your own time. I'm not going to investigate it. Um, an asshole genie who has maliciously perverted your stated desire. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. What is the game you love from the outside, but from the inside would be your torment in prison? Oh, yeah. What, if we get trapped in our yeah, you least get trapped favorite in your, video game? Well, no, no. You get trapped in your favorite video game. But here's the issue. is that there's video games that we like to play, but you would never want to dwell within. Right. Right? I mean, I am a, a staunch proponent of Souls games, but these are bad, bad places. Yeah, I mean, I would not want to be hounded by ghosts as Pac-Man. Chased oh, through endless mazes. Perpetually, yeah, through an endless maze with no escape? Yeah. Uh, no, that's, that's rough stuff. And I think Deep Rock Galactic, although I love to play it to the maximum level, uh, is good. And also another one that we should toss out is probably Destiny. I oh, yeah. love playing Destiny, and I love the story of Destiny. And the don't art. want to be in that world. Oh my God, you die over and over and over again, and then it just keeps happening. And that's, I mean, I wrote, and some, somebody wants you to be happy about it. It's like no. I wrote some Destiny fan fiction and posted it on Reddit under a a pseudonym, pseudo nine, a, a, a pseudo nine, about that very thing. It's true. Okay, let's see what we got here. More cues. Me or forward slash me from forward slash shrug asks, oh, I see. I see. Some IRC, some, uh, IRC shit. Uh, what's your favorite part of the PAX Online stuff that isn't the stream? That's easy as hell. Um, that's the easiest thing on earth. Uh, if you have not been 
into the Discord, it is really deeply unlike any other Discord I've ever seen. And the amount of care and cool things to discover inside there with the help of the um, exclamation point look command, uh, the amount of like weird little narratives and secrets that you can find and trade, um, really, really cool stuff. Um, the vibe in there is just good in general, but it should also be said uh, that Dr. Exoskeleton always seeking new minions. And if, if that phrase means nothing to you, um, you should do a quick search for Dr. Exoskeleton online and find out uh, about a really, really fascinating subculture at PAX that has been ported directly into the digital realms. Yeah, people were, I, I saw some discussion, I think, I honestly don't even know how I'm seeing messages from Gavin um, about a webcam fairy. Should it be a webcam fairy for PAX Online? Oh, that works. Here, here. Yes. Oh, and like, that's true. You know how to be a teacher. Oh, that's true. Dad, now, I should be said. Oh, so everybody, everybody at home, let's be clear, okay? Sorry, it's fine. It's fine. So, Brenna came in with Ronya, and there's a couple of things that that need to be looked at. Okay, first. Um, Brenna says that I didn't learn any new skills during quarantine. And certainly I feel bad about having not done it, but <laughs> I did actually learn a new skill, which was just an old skill, which was how to perform uh, quadratic horse shit uh, in algebra. Oh yeah. Um, now we're all teachers. I did have to learn uh, how to execute that stuff and then teach it to another living human being who did not want to learn it. <laughs> who was not interested at all. Was not interested at all. Also, it's vitally important that you know that my daughter thinks that my background is not cool. In the, in the comic? No, here behind me. She doesn't oh, think that this space? incredible, she doesn't think that this incredible creation is uh, exquisite and it's not the only thing that she's been wrong about today. Have we hit 10K? Well, let me, let me look. Probably not. Be from these brigands. Nope. 9.6. Nope. 9.861. Very close. I think I, I'm going to need time to draw the webcam fairy. Well, so, you, you're going to have to invent it, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm thinking that 515. Couple is more it, minutes. Is that the time? Yeah, because well, that'll, that'll give me fifteen minutes to figure out what the webcam fairy looks like. Well, no, Gav, Gav has got you there. Like, we need a custom, a custom PAX, dude. That looks good as hell. What looks good as hell? The well, comic? I, no, I haven't been. I've been looking at the the question and answer stuff. That looks good as hell. Thanks, man. I'm flying through it. Jesus. I don't think. Don't think it's going to be a hundred percent, but it's going to be ninety-eight. Well, listen. As, as long as we, as long as we hook it up, as long as we get that thing uh, popping. Let's see where we end on the on the hot dog ferry. If you exactly, if you, we're holding off donating. Now is the time. Yeah, let us know. Like and subscribe. Yifei from Colorado asks Mike. Ah, it's me. Really, you've had quite a glow up over the past few years. Really? What? Michael, no, Yifei is saying that you have visually improved. Um, I really like the beard and you seem to have more confidence in your appearance as a result. Would you say this is true? Uh, is, it yeah. like a, is it like having a mask? Is it's it like, like having able, a mask. Is it like having a mask that it's like okay to have on and nobody can give you shit about it? It is. And honestly, I really like wearing masks even in addition. Like I love being, I hope it just stays like this. I love being hidden. Is your is your fantasy that it'll just the, the eventually the hair will go up also? Yeah, I want to cover the entire thing like like a Wookiee. Like a, you want to become a sphere of dark coarse hair. Yeah, uh, Michael, 
it pleases me to tell you that we have ten thousand. All right, four hundred and twenty dollars. I'm gonna start figuring out what this thing looks like. Let's get it. And I also, I see what you did there. Um, I can't grow a beard, but I wonder. Uh, this isn't me saying this. This is Yife. I mean, I can't grow hair of any kind anywhere. Um, uh, I can't grow a beard, but I wonder how weird would it be to just start spirit gumming a fake one to my face every day? <laughs> is there anything as good as your homegrown facial hair? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I'm always impressed by other people's beards and feel like my beard is not great. But I'm like, I look at Josh's beard and I feel like his yeah. beard is really great. It's straight. It's got a lot of density. Yeah. Right? So do you have to like feed it i mean i don't know how it works with hair yeah you have to feed it it's like a fish does it just eat like whatever you eat is it like when you have like a, a like a uh child growing no. inside you like you eat something and then it like gets a crumb or something like you, no, have you to just oil gotta it? like it's just hair you have to clean it you have to wash it you know you have to oil it really yeah you so to, the oil is necessary you have to comb it you have to sing to it. You have to love it. Yeah, as your own child. You have to teach it. Indeed. <laughs> it has to learn. Uh, Una uh, from Akron, Ohio asks, I live close to the National Football Hall of Fame. The building is shaped like Brag, a Why don't you? Yeah, exactly. The building, is the building is shaped like a Pope's hat. And there are quite a few visitors who just come to see the weird shaped building. If you wanted to build a monument to something, what would it be dedicated to? And what weird shape would you make the building? Oh man. I have no idea. A monument to something. A monument to something? What if you, what if we built like a monument to monuments? What would that look like? A monument. Oh, that does that saves us a lot of trouble, right? Like it's just it's just a big monument. You're like, what's that about? It's like we're just monuments. Like, but to what though? Like just Think monuments, about monuments. Itself, and it's like, oh, cool, right? I mean, it's like you come by, you do that tour. I think I do that tour. I would run that tour. Kim from Philadelphia asks, uh, aside from Omen and Jim. Who are your favorite characters to role play as? Um, so a lot of times when you're in the DM role, when you're behind the screen, as they say, um, you get to play a lot of different characters. And so Omen is one of the characters in the C team that I have a chance to play as, but uh, Omen uh, has two mothers who are also have very interesting personalities. Um, he has uh, two sisters. He has a daughter. Um, and so being able to try on all those different characters in that really complicated mesh of relationships is a lot of fun. But the newest character that uh, I've, I've made for something, made for a project, is Jameson Keen from the uh, Vampire Chronicle he run, by, uh, run by Jason Carl. Um, uh, it was, it's an official game. You should definitely take a look at it. It's called Seattle by Night. It's stuffed with some cool friends of ours. The hook um, of that character was really funny. You were a Nosferatu, so you were like gross. the classic disgusting vampire. Yes. But you imagined yourself the sort of face of the operation. Yeah, exactly. Um, and uh, I think that the, I think they turned out really good. And it's it is really only one season eight episodes total, as I recall, um, or eight hours total, I think. No, 16 hours, eight episodes. Um, but it's it's out there for you uh, in these trying times. Uh, I mean, you have Tom. I was just going to say, I had a good time with Tom Hollandaise. Yeah. First time vampire. Same. Yeah, yeah. It's your first time to the meeting. Yeah. Uh, Felix from Bag Paper Bag asks... What is your most cat-like trait? Uh, I would say the need to constantly bathe. Hmm. Uh, I like to lay in the sun. <laughs> like if, I, if 
So a shaft of sunlight is coming in on the carpet. Do you just do you curl up right in it? I just like to lay down in that. Right, just like right on the ground. Uh, Alyssa just dropped me a note to say that we hit uh, eleven thousand four hundred. Thank it's you. Almost, so it's almost it's almost up to eleven thousand five hundred now. Well, um, I, I I encourage you to go check out the Child's Play website. Um, yeah. Look at the look at the work that they're doing, especially talking about putting child life. Uh, gaming and technology specialists in hospitals like this is a role that we completely invented and funded no we invented it catching on. exactly we invented it and funded it proved to hospitals that having someone to act as a, an expert and a nexus um, between that technology and the children that they serve and then to have them share that knowledge with other people in this role that we've manufactured elsewhere um it's it's pretty life affirming shit, and it's yeah. It was a they did a panel this afternoon, at, and yeah. uh, there was some very interesting stuff. I and mean, they were just saying even even sometimes just being someone else in the hospital who has heard of anime or exactly knows because, what Minecraft is. Well, because their <laughs> because their experiences and interests are going to have some overlaps too, right? Um, and it can be. I mean, the the biggest like the scariest part about that is the isolation, and some of that isolation is going to be cultural. Yeah. Right. You're not hooked into those. You don't really understand memes, for example. Um, I guarantee you these people understand a meme or two. Uh, Dax from Melbourne, I, uh, but spelled M-E-L-B-I-N, which of course I appreciate, um, is if you could visit each visit for a day in one location in the D&D universe as yourselves, uh, where would you go and why? Well, that's the easiest thing on earth. You Sigil. would go... Yeah, you would you would go to Sigil, the city of doors, man, and you go wherever you want. I'm scared as hell of Sigil. Um, I would go to the inn uh, of the last home, and I would get those spicy potatoes. What? I would get those spicy potatoes. I mean, not that Crin doesn't have its own problems. <laughs> uh, Dova, yes, that one uh, from the Cat Lady Nerd House in Better Seattle asks. Internet friends, please regale us with your favorite cat shenanigan stories. I am slightly disturbed. The last in the last week, specifically here in the last week, my cat has learned several, and I mean several new meows. Really? Yeah. So the cat was gone for a couple of days. Like this cat basically, this neighborhood just thinks it's their cat. Okay. So it's like I'll go out and try to find my fucking cat in my neighborhood and then i'll look in someone's window and he's just looking at me from the window <laughs> and it's just like and it's like but i don't like that's for me as a social encounter like there's no win for me there i'm gonna say hey you my fucking cat's in your house why don't you like let my cat out it's time for my cat to come home how about you keep your ha cat in your fucking house well, because he he meow. He if a he, cat comes over to my house, I would he, not let it in because cats have all kinds of diseases. He meow. I mean, I'm just. But I would just assume that that was some bad cat owner. Well, I I think that there's probably some people who believe that. But we hung a bell on the front door with the idea that eventually we'd be able to train our dog to use this bell when he needed to go to the bathroom. But only the cat uses it exclusively. Okay. Uh, no, you. But there's still a cat in your home. I have two cats. I have Maui and Momo. Right. Um, they really just sleep all day. They M Maui or sorry, Momo scratches at our door at eight in the morning every oh, sure. morning because that's when it's time to like get fed and get up and everything. But Whose I don't job need is that? To start at seven thirty. Yeah. Uh, and so we we've tried everything. Like you put tin foil out there, you spray the stuff, put down um, double sided tape, like everything we could think of. Have you put? You should put a sign out there that says, "Don't scratch any more, Momo." That's probably, cats, gonna, that's probably going to That's probably going to be. Cats can't it. read. Well, you don't know that. We put a Kara put Kara put a big tub. Like she ordered a tub, a plastic tub that was the width of the hallway there and filled it with water. So now to get out of our room, she, we have to step over a moat. <laughs> she made a worked. moat. But yeah, so then <laughs> How long have you been using this? The moat? Yeah. 
a couple weeks at least. It's been great. We heard one scratch the other day, and we came out and we're like, "How? How did you do it?" I don't know if it was the cat was like balancing over it, and then it's, it's like some kind of like Mission Impossible shit, but yeah. like with cats. Uh, Ransom Thomas from an as yet written crime paperback asks. Which is the better title? The president's neck is missing or tame my wife, please. The president's neck is missing is incredible. I want to help write this. It, Ransom Thomas, you got to get a hold of us. Please reach out for a collab. <laughs> reach, reach out biz at penny-arcade.com and um, let's make your dreams a reality. Uh, so I haven't looked back at this at the stream yet. Oh, did you cook up the fairy? Yeah, I'll show you. Hold on a second. There's the webcam fairy floating up there. Wow. What a delight. Thank you all very much again, by the way, for donating. In, it's indeed, indeed. Much appreciated. We will put it to work in an instant. Oh, now, is that the uh, Logitech uh, Logi? It is. I was just looking up at my camera <laughs> to try it. Uh, all right. Logitech, obviously not a sponsor of the not stream, a but, but consider it. Man, we're coming right up on the end of this panel. Somehow an hour and a half has evaporated. Yeah, I know. In no time, someone from somewhere in the time-space continuum asks, I have zero artistic ability. Same. High five. I'm a decent writer. I do my best. I have no skills that would benefit you or your company. And I have a tendency to run into walls. Is there a job for me at Penny Arcade? Uh, I'm going to hmm. have to say no. I mean, not currently. Um, not currently. And I have to say, you do need to work on your resume a little. Yeah. Oh, boy. Oh boy, Michael. Are we going to wrap this thing up on a Sherlock Holmes one? Oh boy. Sherlock Holmes from 221B Baker Street, London, England asks. That's how you know it's really him. Yep. Yep. He, he's given it away there. Um, you are confined. Which is so unlike him. It is. It is. But there's also like a test there too, right? Yeah. We caught um, him. Mm -hmm. You are confined to an Alaskan cabin in the dead of winter. Now, Laura, I know you're out there. With only one match, you must light a lantern, a gas stove, the pilot light of a water heater, and a fire in a fireplace. Which do you light first? Well, I mean, it seems like what the, the fire in a fireplace, right? Then Why? you got well, what are you basing that on? Because then you have a source of fire. Oh, that is everlasting. Yeah, I mean, the gas stove is also pretty good what if you can't get the fire started with only one match the pilot light yeah but that's listen we're not we're not investigating that darkness what do you think uh l'étranger well what do you like to get anything started first the oh match. you god, god damn it <clears throat> Son, god these mm. we got two minutes come on we can move on <laughs> wow it's, it's, it's the match Okay. Brenna just came in and uh, I said it's the match and then she nodded at me like you would a stupid animal. Corinne <laughs> Weiler is just like, Ugh. the match. Oh, Jesus. The match, everybody. Cora, De <laughs> Cora Detweiler from Louisiana asks, how much would you be willing to pay for a device that allows the user to fill a vessel full of cooked shrimp and receive automatically shucked shrimp, squishy, and free of their chitinous exoskeleton. Um, a lot. I mean, you can also just pur purchase shrimp that way. Yeah, I mean, I realized I had to come to terms with the fact that I don't actually like shrimp. Oh, have I, you been eating it and being like, ugh, one of these times? Ugh. Well, I mean, I would eat it sometimes. I would get it. But what I like is um, breading and cocktail sauce. <laughs> <laughs> so have you found I a way to just get, get have you found a way to get that working breading pops or something little bits of breading you, what if you could get breading pops with uh 
a cocktail sauce center. Oh my gosh. What just, just sign me up. You, you would have a very difficult time uh, stopping after popping one of those. Well, it's just about 530. All I have left to do is put the text in. Uh, so that is all but done. Okay. Well, here, let's, let's get one more cue in here. Or is it done? Oh, it's 530. It's 530. We got to do it. We did it. I'm going to look over at the stream. It. Uh, strip is looking right. Can it handle that text in a second? Yep. Sounds good. PAX online. Global. Thank you so much. Thank uh, you. Thank for you. For rolling through. Obviously, uh, thank you for supporting the work that Child's Play does as well to the tune of $11,851.66. Wow. And obviously, keep up with them. They've started uh, doing their own streams uh, out there to get to know you. And of course, uh, try not to miss the panel. Uh, head back, grab it from the VOD. Uh, all that stuff is going to be going up on YouTube as well. Um, and you'll have a chance to understand what that money actually does. And I think that you'll be shocked uh, by the sophistication of that uh, system. Uh, and anyway, until next time, we'll see you. Bye, everybody.